So news articles and videos are coming out discussing the latest Star Citizen controversy in regards to the devs now scaling back the roadmap to avoid timeline distractions. Yes, yes, they're starting to now blame the players for holding devs accountable to promises made for the development of one of the largest and most ambitious titles of all time. My name is Big Fry, and we're going to go through it all here. If you guys like the video, leave a like on it and subscribe for more industry news, indie development, and everything in between. And I want to give a shout out to every single supporter of my channel over on Twitch as well as on YouTube. Starting tomorrow, February 7th, I will be streaming Monday to Friday at 4 p.m. Eastern on YouTube. Twitch is just not doing it for me anymore. And I wanna stream where I have the largest amount of people to reach. So come through to the streams. They're gonna be live every single day, Monday to Friday. And let's just chill, play some games, talk about industry news, Q and A's, and it's gonna be fun as hell. So looking at this article from Ars Technica, Star Citizen developers Cloud Imperium Games new public development roadmap will no longer include target dates for coming features more than one calendar quarter away. The change, the company writes, is largely to avoid distraction and continued noise every time we shift deliverables from a very loud contingent of roadmap watchers who see projections as promises. And if you think this article is taking anything out of context, it's not. They actually decided to post that and gaslight the people who have funded this company and this game to the tune of 430 plus million dollars, almost a half a billion dollars. Those people who are quote unquote roadmap watchers who see projections as promises, those people are now looked at as I, I guess some sort of enemy or distraction to the dev teams. And according to the post itself on the RSI website, their continued noise every time we shift deliverables has become a distraction both internally at CIG and within our community, as well as to prospective Star Citizen fans watching from the sidelines at our open development communication. So not only are the people that are trying to hold the devs responsible and accountable for their promises and guarantees of features that we've been hearing about for years now, those people are now distractions, both internally at CIG and on forums on social media, on comment sections, so they're distracting the community, as well as prospective Star Citizen fans who, you know, might consider, you know, buying into the game, but they're seeing all this negativity and distraction. I've followed Star Citizen pretty loosely over the past, I would say, five years at this point. And every time you ask somebody in the community, like, when a feature is coming, something like salvaging, or when you ask when we're going to be able to fly into Pyro and, and jump through portals to go to different systems, everything always leads back to server meshing. Server meshing is the technology that's going to allow people to play together, mesh servers together. So if I'm in one planet area and somebody's in another, we might be on two different servers, but it's kind of like instance layering when it comes to World of Warcraft, and that's a very simple explanation, and obviously there's a lot of underlying tech with it, but we've been hearing about server meshing since 2016. And it is still nowhere in sight. A post that came after their most recent Citizen Con, which happened in October of last year, they said that their current aim is to release persistent streaming in the first version of the replication layer, ideally between quarter one and quarter two of next year, which would be right about now, 2022. We'll then follow up with the first version of a static server mesh, barring any unforeseen technical complications between quarter three and quarter four of next year. But now we can't actually track whether or not that is a deliverable or whether or not that is actually happening. We don't actually know because they're now changing the roadmap, scaling it down because they don't want people to conflate projections as promises. 10 years in development, $430 million, 700 plus devs, and we are still in a very early alpha build of this fucking game and then 
the people that are loud and vocal and trying to hold them responsible and accountable are gaslit in a post and called roadmap watchers and a distraction to the company. A company that just can't seem to get their shit together. When you look at resources like Star Citizen Tracker and you see that they're only 27% completed on major systems only, and you actually look and you see that they've only completed around 13% of, of the promised features and systems it doesn't paint a really good picture and I think more and more people are starting to question just what the fuck is actually going on with the studio and with this game and I'm one of those people that when I talk about Star Citizen I, I say just instantly that I don't think they've made enough progress to warrant playing the game full time and you're always met with a, a, a flurry of people saying I don't know how you can't say there hasn't been progress they've added hospitals over here they've made some progress in certain areas but none in the areas that I think are going to really make a huge impact on your core gameplay they've added some survival elements They've changed the inventory system around. In my opinion, I'm not a big fan of the changes. I actually, I didn't like what it was before, but I liked before better than it is now. They've added a shit ton of ships, of course, and they've also added a lot of quality of life improvements. Now, granted, it's an alpha, so the quality of life improvements right now, I mean, we'll see what it's like 10 years down the road when we get to beta. They've squashed and pretty much eliminated a lot of the 30Ks, which was like the server crashing. It was super frustrating playing that back in the day. But in terms of like core mechanics and gameplay, nothing's really been done. We still can't go to Pyro. We still can't have more than 50 players on a server. It's still the same gameplay loop with the addition of things like volumetric clouds. They've added Crusader in the past what, like couple of years. I remember when I jumped in, I believe it was in 2016. And at the time they said that salvaging was around the corner and it's still not in the game. Think about this, in 2012, it was a space exploration game with 185 systems. And in 2022, it's Stanton with the upcoming patch. And, and keep in mind, this is tentative, a hospital on Loreville and a coffee shop vendor AI in area 18. So that's fantastic. In a Venture Beat interview from June 2018, Aaron Roberts was actually quoted by saying, in terms of an instance right now, we can put about 50 players in an instance. That will go up. But the final plan is obviously once we get the server meshing in, that won't be this year, but will be coming next year. That will allow everyone to play in one huge instance with all players. So even back then, it was supposed to be coming in 2019. Then in 2019, it was, ah, it'll be next year, next year next year and then that post that came out in october after citizen con uh it's gonna be next year and we're still just waiting for any sort of core gameplay exploration salvage taxi missions more than one system one of the things that i always uh hear and, and see in defense of star citizen is that all these extra features and scope that was added to the game was because the community actually wants it to be in the game they got feedback from the community and everyone said yeah put these in keep doing the the stretch goals keep building this game up into something huge but when you look at what chris roberts said in march of and keep in mind 2015 he says squadron 42 will be toward the end of the year that's sort of basically wing commander single player narrative and at the end of the year we will release the very early alpha of the persistent universe it won't be nearly all of the systems and planets but we plan to have five or six systems you can fly between you won't be able to do all of the things we're planning on you to do but probably trading mining piracy combat and a lot of core stuff then the company plans to spend 2016 filling out the rest of the star system, finishing ships, finishing characters, basically going from five to 130 star systems and adding more of the functionality and features that we have and building out different roles. By the end of this year, backers will have everything they originally pledged and plus a lot more. But of course, our intention is that it's much bigger, more expansive, huger game than I ever considered we can do. This was seven years ago. And reading that then and seeing them gaslight people who are starting to become frustrated and vocal and holding them accountable now tells me that this project is never going to be completed because of the mismanagement from the fucking ground up. 
and it all stems from Chris Roberts. My name is Big Fry. Thank you guys for watching. If you guys like the video, leave a like on it and subscribe for more industry commentary. Fuck Star Citizen and fuck anybody that gets at you for asking questions about a game that you put your money towards. I'll see you guys at the live stream tomorrow. And keep in mind, we are going to be live Monday to Friday at 4 p.m. Eastern on YouTube. Appreciate every single supporter, every member of this channel. You guys can join for only 99 cents a month. You can support the channel and the content that you like directly. And I'll see you on the next one.